Alright, in this video we're going to do some more advanced modeling. So the first thing that you're going to have to do is make a new folder. And I'd like you to call the new folder inside of your student folder. Um, you're going to name it Circles, Mirror, and Holes. So go ahead and make that folder right now. And after you're done making the folder, we're going to go ahead and do a File New. Make sure you're in the English, temp English template, Standard Inch IPT, and hit Create and do a file save as navigate back to your student folder so this PC scroll down into our V Drive go ahead and jump into your student folder and make sure you're going into the new folder that you just made and we're gonna rename this part and you're gonna call it circles mirror and holes go ahead and hit save and save that into that new folder and then what we're going to do is start a 2D sketch. Now, let's take a look at our model. Let's take a look at some dimensions. We're given a little height dimension here. So that's 0.5. Notice it says typical, which means that this is continuously 0.5 all the way through this part of the model. Then if I move over, I got a 2.5 radius dimension here for this circle, a 2 inch dimension for that circle. Um, I'm given some locate. I'm given a location dimension here. So from the outer edge to the center of the circles is four inches. And just so you know, that is also symmetrical on the other side. So the overall is actually eight inches, which actually should be in there. So let's go ahead and drop that in there for you to see. So that should be eight inches from end to end. And then um, I get a size dimension here, so again, and then this should say uh, typical at the end, because typical means that if this is 2, this one is also 2 over here. So we're given a size dimension there. Um, I have a hole over here, and I have a size dimension for that hole. Notice how it says 2x. 2x means that if there's two of them. So this hole and this hole are both using this information. So this information provided um, is for both holes, 2x. Then it says 0.25 through. What that means is this hole right there goes all the way through the object. And how big is that? It's 0.25. And then they give you this square U-shape thing, which means counter bore. So this portion right here is a counter bore. What does it mean? It means that the diameter of this circle and this circle are 0.5, those two, and the depth of that counter bore, so from there to there, the depth is 0.13. And then let's take a look over here. We're given some location dimensions. Remember, typical means that it's going to be the same on both sides, so this is the same over here this is the same over here so those are location dimensions for that hole and then I'm given an overall depth which is two inches so let's go ahead and make this thing first thing we're gonna do is start with the front view which is this shape here and in order to do that I am going to only draw half of the object so I'm gonna to go to here and I'm gonna stop so I'm gonna draw this front view portion right there and um, then I'll mirror that to the other side and extrude it back to get my 3D shape. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to start in the front view. And remember, we always start at 0, 0. So I'm going to start right here where my mouse is. And I'm going to go over. How big is this line? If you remember, it's typical over here. So this is 2 inches. So let's go ahead and do that. So start 2D sketch in the front view. Draw a line from the zero, 00 over 2 inches. Hit escape to get out of that. Pan over. I'm going to move this dimension just down below. So just click it and drag it. And the next thing we want to do is draw this circle, which has a radius of 2 inches. So I'm going to show you a little trick with the line tool to draw this one. We're actually going to use the line tool to draw this circle. So I'm going to go line tool. Now, when you do this, just listen for a second and watch what I do and then you go do it. 
I'm going to just hover over this endpoint until I see the green dot. Then I'm going to left click the left mouse button and hold it down. Do not let go of the left mouse button. Once I hold it down and I move my mouse out to the right, you'll notice that I'm drawing an arc. But I want this arc to go all the way back over to my x-axis. So I just go over and snap to that. Now if I move left to right, I can just draw this circle. I don't I'm not putting in any measurements right now. I'm just snapping back to the x-axis. And then I can let go of my left mouse button. And then hit escape. So that's how you can use the line tool to draw that circle. Or half circle. And then I'm going to add a dimension. So I'm going to go dimension. Click on that. And that thing had a radius of 2. So I'm going to hit 2 and then hit enter. Hit escape to get out of that dimension tool. So now I kind of have the lower portion of my shape. So um, while we're doing circles, let's go ahead and draw this half circle, which has a radius of 2.5. But this time, instead of using the line, we're actually going to use the circle tool, which you haven't used yet. Notice that um, their first click is the center. Their second click is determining the... Um, size of the circle. So I'm going to go circle, left click the center here because both those circles are concentric which means they share the same center. Now something you need to pay attention to if you look at the da dashed line it goes from one edge of the circle all the way to the other edge which indicates diameter but the dimension we were given was radius. It said radius of 2.5 so our diameter would be double that, which is 5. So 5, enter. And now I got that circle. Um, I'm going to go back over here. So I'm going to hit escape on the keyboard. And then I'm going to draw a line up, which is 0.5. And I'm going to draw a line over, but I'm going to go through that first circle and go past it a little bit. And then I'll show you how to trim it. So I'm going to go line. I'm going to go from this edge, or that point, 0, 0, up, 0 0.5, enter. I'm going to go straight over. Make sure you're going 90 degrees. You want a nice straight line. And go through that first circle, and then left click. Doesn't matter where, just go through the first one. Now I'm going to show you a trim tool. The trim tool is up in the modify panel up here. It's right here. You'll also notice in parentheses, it is X on the keyboard. That is a good one to remember. I'm always pressing X on the keyboard to trim. So I'm going to try that keyboard shortcut right now. So X, and then if you look, it previews the different things that you could trim. So I'm going to trim this little line right here. So I'm going to left click that, and then hit escape. All right, we are almost there. Remember, we only want half of the object. So these two circles should be ending right in line with the middle. So to do that, I'm going to use something called a construction line. Now the construction line is under the formatting panel. So I'm, and it's this little um, red angle looking icon right here. And you'll notice um, that the construction line, if you look at that right picture, the construction line is going to come in as dashed. So I'm going to turn that on. Notice how it's blue. I'm going to go to the line tool. And I'm going to draw a line from this point, which is the center of the circle, straight up 90 degrees. And just make sure you go through both circles and then left click. Hit escape. There is your construction line. It's dashed. The thing that's cool about construction lines is that they won't be used in your sketch when you go to extrude. So the extrusion won't recognize this as part of the shape. Construction lines are typically used for trimming or locating maybe centers of circles or um, things of that nature. So let's go ahead and do some trimming. Remember X on the keyboard. So I'm going to press X on the keyboard. And I'm going to start getting rid of some stuff. I'm going to get rid of this right there. And I'm going to get rid of all of this. And then finally, this. So I'm left with half of my sketch, which is exactly what I wanted. So what we're going to do now is mirror this portion of the sketch over to this side. And the mirror tool is up under the um, pattern panel right here. So you can hover over that. You can kind of see what it, what it does. And if you read that, you can see how to, how to use it. So I'm going to click on mirror. So the first thing it wants you to do, notice highlight in blue, it wants you to select what you want to mirror. 
So we're going to click some things that we want to mirror. We're going to click one, two, three, four, five. You're going to click those five lines. So I'm done selecting. So now I'm going to click on mirror line. Once I click mirror line, it wants to know, well, where do you want to mirror across? And I want to mirror across this construction line right here. So I'm going to left click that construction line. And I'm going to hit apply. And as soon as I did that, it mirrored this shape to the other side. So I'm going to hit done. I'm going to hit finish sketch. Notice I left my construction line. So when I go to extrude right now, it doesn't even recognize that construction line is there. It doesn't think it's part of the sketch, which is nice. I'm going to go the other direction, and then my overall depth is 2 inches. So I'm going to go 2 inches on that depth. So 2, and then I'm going to hit OK. All right, the next part that we're going to do is, are the holes. So the holes are on this face and this face. So let's go ahead and do this one first. All right, so that hole is going to be, um, remember this information? So um, we're going to come back to that. Let's go over here first. I'm going to hit the home button, and I'm going to zoom in on this portion because that's where I'm going to be working. And then I'm going to go up here into the modify panel, and here is my hole tool. So as soon as I click hole, um, the first thing that you're doing is placement. So it wants to know where do you want the hole to go. And if you start moving your mouse, you could click different faces, and we want the hole to go on this face. So I'm going to click anywhere on that face at all. Okay. Now what we need to do is tell it where do we want the hole to be. So we need to add in some location dimensions. So for example, this dimension right here, which comes off of this edge. So I'm going to click on this edge in my, in my model, and I'm going to type in 0.775. So I'm going to click on this edge, and then now I'm locating that hole, and I'm going to type in 0.775. The other location dimension comes off of this bottom edge. So from the bottom edge up to the center of the hole, it's 1 inch. So I'm going to click the bottom edge, and that is 1. So now I have that hole um, located. Now I need to keep moving my way down the line over here. So we want our hole to be a simple hole. Okay, so we're going to go with that first one. And then there's a certain type of hole that we want, which is called a counterbore. So I'm going to click that for counterbore. So click the simple and then click the counterbore. Then we're going to start determining the size of that hole. So they start with the counterbore and they work their way down to the through hole. So the first thing that they want to know, if you look, is the diameter of the counterbore. So your diameter of your counter bore is 0.5. So I'm going to click on this measurement right here. So this measurement should be 0.5. Then if we work our way down, the depth of the counter bore, which is indicated right here, is 0.13. So you're going to type that in. And then finally, the last one is the through hole, which is the hole that goes all the way through. What is the diameter of that thing? Notice the arrows. The diameter of that is 0.25. Okay. So there is that, and that is all set. So now we need to go do the other hole. So while I'm still in this, I'm just simply going to go over here, and now I'm going to click on this face. So I'm going to click there. And again, remember our order of operations. The next thing I'm going to do is click an edge. So off of this edge, remember that that was typical, the 0.775. So I'm going to click on that edge. I'm going to type in 0.775. Then we did this location dimension off of this edge. Remember that was typical, so that's going to be 1. And it will maintain all of the same other dimensions that I used on the first one. So I'm all good. I'm going to click OK. And I now have... My finished part, if I shift and the mouse wheel, left click hold that mouse wheel down, I can orbit. And you can see the counter bore there in, if I uh, pan, you can kind of get a better look here. You can see the counter bore um, there now. All right, last thing, and then we're going to stop this video, and in the next video we'll do the drawing. 
we need to remember the last thing whenever you're done with the model is set up your materials for this we're going to stick with the ABS plastic um, for 3D printing purposes and then remember you need to go update your I property so I'm going to go file I properties go to physical and hit update and it'll update all of the information uh, based on the ABS plastic so you're going to hit close and then save so save that part all right